Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down 466. We get the NASDAQ off 122. S&Ps are off 46. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Cakes, that as we do each and every Wednesday. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Cakes, that. I can't believe it's a week later already, man. Holy cow, man. These are going quick. <laughs> How about it? How about it? We got some interesting things with the uh, Dixie on its highs, right? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Talk to us, man. All right. Well, why don't we start out with your favorite currency, the uh, Japanese yen? Good. Perfect. So, uh, dollar index is strong, but it doesn't seem to be uh, impacting the, uh, the yen. The yen seems to be a little bit stronger. So we had a uh, rejection of uh, two weeks ago. We set a higher move high in the uh, U.S. dollar yen trade. And since then, it's been under pressure a little bit. And then we had a uh, spike high yesterday, failed to make a higher move high. And now it reversed gears. And today we're, um, we're all off. If you pull up the chart right now, you can see that um, the market is going lower right now. Yes. No, I, I can, you know, that half of, you know, 44 ticks. Yeah, look at that, man. Yeah. And, you know, you didn't get back in that range, man. I mean, and that was from, uh, well, that big down day. What was that? That was... August 1st, right? That's when we went from that 109 to 107, right? Right. Yeah. Now, here's an interesting thing for uh, your listeners. Uh, yesterday was October 1st. We had the beginning of a month. A yes. lot of times you have moves that are initiated at the beginning of the month. We had multiple markets that spiked against the dollar or with the dollar, you know, what have you, yesterday. And the dollar index started off very strong today. It was very interesting because it started to go against those um, pivot points from yesterday, initially this morning. Yes. Okay. So dollar index was higher um, all night, and especially before the U.S. stock market opened. The pound was lower. The euro was lower. The yen, however, this the U.S. dollar yen was lower. So that was not going the way of the dollar index whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now we have another interesting thing. The U.S. dollar Swiss, that had a similar sell signal yesterday. They crossed parity. Okay, for the second time re as, as of late, but then they rejected it and it looked like it was a failure. And then like a balloon underwater, the, the Swiss of all the currencies shows dollar strength and in a very, very big way. So I think that we might be coming to one of those inflection points again, you know, and especially since we're at the beginning of the month. Okay. Where the US dollar yen, this little sell signal that's going on from yesterday and is following through today, maybe setting the trend for a while, especially because member of the Fed, they cut rates again, you know, just uh, recently, where I thought they were gonna hold off another month. And then they also came up with the follow through that they're, they, they're likely to pull some more bullets out of their pocket. Right. So the bear, the US um, dollar yen bear, I think it's back even though we have trade talks coming up next week. Yeah, no, uh, you know, it's so intriguing to me that the, I mean, gold got smoked last week, but it came right back. And, you know, when when you're looking at the gold market, I mean, it's amazing we're still at 1,500 and the dollar's at highs. So it's like, right. okay, right. you know, if, exactly. if the dollar gives it up at all, you know, you, you're really gonna get some action here. Yeah. Um, sure. You know, but each and every time that it seems to come off a high, it just we haven't got any follow through on the way down yet. You know what I mean? Right. So. Now, here's the other interesting thing. Like I said, the dollar index today showed all the strength overnight yes. and then coming to our market opening. All of a sudden, it's falling back a little bit. I think that this signal, this might be a good inflection point because yesterday the euro spiked low. Now, that market's been trending lower <clears throat> for the past month and a half. Okay? Right pressing that lower boundary of support. And it's usually when it gets to this 108 half to 109 half area, that's where the, no matter what's going on, the euro seems to find a base and gets another like rally. Yes. I don't know why, it just seems to be it. Right. So yesterday we had a piercing line formation, another um, Japanese candlestick signal, you know, and it, initially the euro US dollar was lower today. It looked like that signal might fail like it did in the Swiss, but it didn't, now it's higher. And then the pound also did the same thing. It spiked low yesterday. Was and I think it's slightly lower right now, but it's at the upper part of its range. And it's actually, if you look at it, yeah, it, it looks is. Wait, they, I can see it. It, it rejected that uh, 1227, right? You're at 12303 right. right now. Yeah. Right. And remember, I mentioned the US dollar Swiss. I looked at the Swiss versus all the other major currency crosses um, last night. The Swiss was totally strong. So all of a sudden this morning, we get this snap back, like it's like a knee jerk. I think that you might see the US dollar Swiss turn around in reverse gears. And if it does, 
then I think you'll see a sell-off in the dollar index for at least like a week or so as we head into the trade talks. Yeah. Man, there's, there's so much different movement. I was, I was listening to uh, Bloomberg, and one person was bringing up the chart, and then the other person was saying, well, I think it's pretty easy, you know, and it was a fundamentalist, but when they said it, it was just amazing. And what it was is that they said, well, if you go back to, like, 2000, and trade in the U.S. dollar was like $1 trillion, all trade around the world, right? Mm -hmm. If you come to today, I forget what the number was, but it's like, Five to seven trillion or nine trillion. Right. I mean, I it, think you told me it was sixteen, but whatever it, it, it was, it, man, it was outrageous. Man, yeah. I mean, it was like and and you I know, said, wasn't everybody using the dollar in two thousand? Yeah. Right? I mean, no, that's, totally. yeah, of course. And they so were. Yeah. you know, it was like when you're looking at that aspect, I, I was like saying, well, is there only going to be the dollar left? I mean, if that's what all trade is, and she wasn't just talking about the United States; she was talking about two foreign countries outside of the United States still trading in U.S. dollars. Sure, you know, which you can see why it's going to make sense. You start trading. You know, and all these other currencies, man, you better have it hedged out in a big yeah. way, right? Well, ultimately, everybody wants U.S. dollars. Even if they're using other currencies, for, even in multiple currencies, eventually they want to somehow cash out into dollars because it's always the most stable currency. Right, right. right. Hey, you know, let me ask you something. When, before the euro came in, I know you were, you were still trading currencies then. That must have been really wild, right? That there was all oh, these sure. different currencies, right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, the D mark. Well, that was when the D mark was a really big deal. I see. Okay. So I remember, I remember at, at, when I was on the trading floor at the Merck that the currencies, when they still were flying in the futures pits back in the early 90s, the currencies were crazy. I mean, they were right. absolutely nuts. And the D mark pit, the D mark pit, and the yen pit, those were the two biggest pits there. Were they? Okay. Yeah. Okay. The D mark was that was the that was the big. I mean, the pound had huge volume, but it, it wasn't the most actively traded contract, you know, except right. for when it was really busy. But on any given day, the DMARC, that thing was crazy. And that was before you had an EU. That was when it was just Germany. Sure, you know? right, so right. When, and, that also reminds me, uh, we have tomorrow retail sales coming out for the EU, and uh, that's a big deal because they just downgraded all their forecasts for GDP and all these things for the next year for the EU. So if they get a nice positive spike, for retail sales, which would obviously be coming out unexpected, then that would help to fuel this little bounce in the euro US dollar that might be starting to form right now. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, you can see the, the S&P, I mean, the indices are getting smoked out here today. And it's really sure. going to be interesting to see, okay, what does that do to the currencies, if anything? Do you know what Seriously, I'm saying? Man. You know. Right. Uh, right. We have those trade talks coming out tomorrow. And remember, Boris Johnson was speaking, and there's a whole nonsense now with Brexit going on. So we have this timeline. We're, we're, we're three weeks away from Brexit deadline. We're three weeks away because next week is the trade talks, and we know next month there's a bunch of deadlines for that, too. So we'll see if they manifest. So it's a never-ending cycle of news right now, man. Amazing. Yeah. Listen, folks, every trading day, you can go over to forex-trading-unlock.com. Check out Teddy, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy, you have a great Thanks. week. Safe week, man. We look forward to speaking you next too. week. Thanks so See much, next Teddy. Week. Thank Take you. Care, man.